Someday, but when I was about 13, God got a hold of my life, and uh, and I went from being having some real, you know, significant problems to being completely bananas for Jesus. You know, I, I was I was just so excited about God. Which my my mom and dad, you know, they're not here, so I'm gonna talk about them. Um, I just don't care about the mom. Your mom always listens to your sermon. You know what I mean? Your mom does. It, nobody else does. But. Um, but, you know, to be honest, they, you know, I changed a lot in a short period of time. And one of the things that, that I really know kept me serving the Lord and the thing that kept me, uh, you know, kept me intact is Thursday night was Bible study night from the, you know, I, I got excited about the Lord in about June of one summer going into the seventh grade. Um, and then in September or October, we started having Bible study. Thursday night, and that Thursday night Bible study went all the way through college, and uh, until it was finally I was had to do something else, I couldn't do it anymore. But all of Thursday night was Bible study night, year after year after year. And the only thing about about small group is, is someday you are going to be at a point where, like we talked about uh, last week, which you should listen to because it, it was really brilliant stuff. The second half, you know, the first half was good too. Um, is that there, there comes a day when maybe you did something dumb and you failed. Maybe you are struggling in your faith for one reason or another. And it's that night that you don't feel like going to Bible study. And, and that night that is you're tired, you don't want to go, you don't really want to see the people there. Because sometimes when we're hurting, we just want to curl up in a corner and not go anywhere. But I tell you over and over and over again in my life, have those been the times when I needed the most help? And, and, and there's no way I could even begin to count the number of times that I didn't feel like going to a Bible study for whatever reason, you know. And um, mostly the people that were there, I'm just kidding. Um, and you go to the Bible study and, and God needs you there. Somebody says something, they pray for you, you feel supported. And then you kind of make it to that next day. You were created to need each other. If we have a superficial church where people come on Sundays, they talk and they chat and they, and they do their plastic smile and go on their own way, well, if we do grow, it'll be terrible growth because you're all going to be this deep. And, and I don't want to be part of a superficial church. I, I don't want to be part of a, of, of a church that, that doesn't have authenticity, that doesn't that really know each other. Because God made us to do things together. The Bible goes on and on. About how two are better than one. We looked at some of those verses last week, and, and I, I got an illustration of that this morning. I was I went to the office, and we we bought a new. They finally came out because our board is so new; they didn't have any cases for it yet. The soundboard up there, and so we bought this case that was special for this board, and it cost a lot of money. I was like, really, it cost that much? She said, Well, it's the only one they make for it, you know. And well, you know, you have a significant investment, so you buy it. This thing is huge. It's this tall. It's, it's, it's a ginormous thing. And it was at my office because I put wheels on it and stuff. And, and um, so then I go and I was going to load this into the back of the car this morning. That was a real pain in the butt. Let me tell you. I, was, I got into the thing. I pushed. I shoved. I fell. I did a Yosemite Sam uh, impersonation. You know, Yosemite Sam. Everything is Looney Tunes at our house right now. Everything my daughter knows about the world comes from Looney Tunes. Uh, and so she's good. We're doing duck season, rabbit season stuff with puppets. Duck season, rabbit season. And, so, and she's going to buy a purple gun and shoot the fox. I'm like, what? Buy a purple gun and shoot? Well, it's, it's the wily coyote, you know. Do you know how politically incorrect Looney Tunes are? I mean, they drink, they smoke, they shoot each other. I mean, Dora never does that stuff, okay? <laughs> And, uh, and that's what I'm pumping in her brain in the backseat of my van. And I probably should change the dog to door again. Um, 
Anyway, I'm trying to get this stuff in the, in the back of, of, of my van, and two are better than one. Easy for two people, hard, hard for one person. And, and that's how God made you. Now, you might be like me, and, and, and maybe you're the kind of person that always likes being with other people, and there are people like that. Uh, I'm not that person, you know. I, I am, I'm one that has left my own devices without any intentionality, would be pretty content staying home most of the time. You know, and we're all different that way. You know, how extroverted we are, how introverted we are. I'm telling you today, though, that when I look at Scripture, when I look at my own life and, and, and what God has done and what I've seen Him do in the lives of other people, I don't care how introverted you are. You need connection. Now, I know that that's more work for some of you than others. I know that's more challenging for some than it is others. But it doesn't change the fact of the matter that you will not, you cannot do and be all that God intends of you to do and be <clears throat> unless you are in a group of people that truly know you. And that's what we're going to look at a little bit here. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 18 verse 20 where two or three are gathered together as my followers, I, there I am among them. So where God is, so when, when the right people gather for the right reason, God is able to do the right thing. If the right people don't gather for the right reason, it hinders God from moving in your life because He plans to use people in your life. God involves us in His plan. And so unless you get in contact with other people, He, he can't do that. Ecclesiastes 4.8 There was a man all alone. He had neither son nor brother. And there was no end to his toil. Yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. you got to get help. If you want to move forward, we're going to look at four statuses of being. And I've actually I've read this in a couple of different places, so it's not unique with me. Um, but I, I, I've read it a couple of places. But it is, but it's totally true, and it's it has to do with how we move into a group of people. Level one, if you're taking notes, as all of you I'm sure are, um, number one is the arena. The arena is you walk into a place and. You look at somebody and uh, I don't know you and you don't know me. We know the same about each other. It's, it's, the, it's the arena. But we need to be in a place where we feel like people know me. Now you maybe have heard me say before that the way to make people feel loved is to make them feel heard. That we feel loved and accepted the most when we are, when we feel that we are understood and we're still loved and accepted, that is a powerful place. That's why that when you you can say things to people that they completely disagree with, as long as you have that safety that that I understand you and I love you. Now, what we do is we hold back and we don't want people to understand us, and that's the arena. The, we we go in and and you see me and I see you. But number two is the mask. The mask are the things that I know about me, but you don't know about me. It's the mask. And we all wear masks all the time. A few months ago, I think it was last summer, we did a whole series called Masquerade that, that had talked about the different masks that we put on. And, and masks are necessary. There are things that are not appropriate for church that are appropriate for at home. You know, I mean, we wear masks. We, Paul said, I become all things to all people. You know, and so you can say, well, that's still Paul's putting on different masks. I do think it is, it is a loving thing to connect with people to where they are, you know. Now, how do I do that without being, without being fake? I want to encourage you that some masks are necessary to get along socially. But when you start feeling connected with a group of people, like I hope, if you're here today, that you find yourself connected with the rock in some way. I hope that the... That, 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 you know, I know the coffee and donuts aren't enough to make people come. I know that the only way that we're going to have a vibrant community here is if I can convince you, if I can create environments, if I can, you know, get you together with people, that all of a sudden the masks can fall off some. And, and that's, that's a scary thing. You know, that mask comes off a little bit, and, and now you can see me. You know, now if you want to hurt me, you can't. Because you, you see my, some of my weaknesses. You see some of my insecurities. And, and I'm not going to force the mask off of anybody. You know, and that's why we've been joking a lot about the men's Bible study, making them cry and stuff. Just so you know, I've been in those meetings. 
I, I was at a men's retreat once. Well, it wasn't a men's retreat, but they would split the men and women uh, from each other. And I was thoroughly uncomfortable with the level of mask taking off that was going on. And um, as I sat there and I nodded and I smiled and thought to myself, I would never share what you just shared. And, and I'm not going to, I don't like that. And I, and I don't even know that, that that's uh, appropriate in, in situations that you don't know the people well. And that's why we, we've geared these small groups that they aren't, you know, bury your soul, you know, everything out in the open types of things. Because I know that if you're like me, that that makes you uncomfortable. But there is a time, and there are people, that my mask can come off. My, my wife is one. You know, my, the mask comes off. She gets to see the ugly parts of Scott, and she gets to see the good parts of Scott. And, and that is why that relationship is so powerful. Or, in some people's situations, so damaging... But because she gets to see the real Scott, there's no hiding from your spouse. Um, if she's able to hurt me more deeply and more quickly than anybody else in this world, it's because of the intimacy that's there. That, that relationship that, is, that God means to be so powerful. Because when you know me, and you still love me knowing me, that's a powerful place to be. That, that is a, a strong place to be. Now, if, you're, if your marriage isn't healthy, um, that's very vulnerable. That's very vulnerable. And that is the thing with masks. Masks protect you from some of that. But you, when you take that mask off, God intends for this to be a place that when that mask comes off, that it is a source of strength and not a source of pain. Inger Lisa, some years ago, I'm going to tell one of your stories. I hope I don't embarrass you. Um, <clears throat> she was sitting with a group of ladies. We were young, and they were sharing prayer requests as they went around the circle. <clears throat> and, they, and it got to be her turn. And she thought, you know, she was hearing these prayer requests, and, and she thought, boy, these are all kind of superficial, you know, these prayer requests that they're sharing. I mean, this is, and so she shares something that was actually really close to her heart. I mean, she shared something that was kind of an insecurity of hers. Um, and something that she struggled with. And so then she shared it with this group of ladies. And they proceeded for the next 20, well, okay, 20 minutes of an exaggeration. But a significant period of time, 10 minutes, to, to tell her how to fix all of her problems. And, and really made her feel um, judged. Made her, made her feel less than in the, in the condescending tone that they took. And, and, uh, and she came home from that, from that thing. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, she, was, she was really upset. You know, um, I, I, I know, I'm not telling you anything. I, did you some, sometimes you're, you're, it hurts ladies more than it would us, I think. Or maybe just differently. I don't know. I think it, it hurts all of us to be in those situations. But, but she, she was really hurt. And, and that particular group uh, actually got to the point where, I, where I, I, I made things so that they didn't meet anymore. Because you know, she'd come home upset from that group all the time. And then, <laughs> this is the really funny part, when I said something to somebody about it, they said, you know, my wife comes home from that group upset all the time. <laughs> well, then why are you doing it? You know, let's, let's stop this. So we did. <clears throat> if ladies can't be nice, dang it, they don't get to me. <laughs> so be nice to each other. Well, shut your thing down. <laughs> but man, I really did that. I was, I was the tail wagging the dog a little bit, but I got that Bible study shut down because it wasn't good. Um... And they should have known better. They're all older than Inger Lisa and we're Christian ladies. We want to be a place here that I, I want to earn your trust enough, both personally and as a church, that that mask can begin to come off. Because if that mask can come off and I get to love you and know you and, and to know you and still love you, I know that that is going to put you in a powerful place. I know that that's going to be a good representation of how God sees you and loves you. And so, the, the number one that we talked about was the arena. We all come together and we can kind of see each other. You know some stuff about me and I know some stuff about you just by being around each other. The second thing is the mask. And the mask is very, very, it's dangerous and powerful at the same time. And our goal is to create an environment where that mask can cautiously come down. And uh, you know, these first small groups, I'll be honest with you, uh, they're going to be a little awkward. There, I, it doesn't matter what we do. There is nothing that I could possibly do in our first uh, foray into small groups to completely take away that awkwardness. If you're like me, 
And maybe none of you are quite as psychotic and insecure as me. Um, but I'm, I, I'm just going to... I think if I'm thinking something, other people probably are too. They just don't admit it. And so I'm just going to bleed on you for a moment here. Uh, groups of people intimidate me. I, I was talking to Matthew about the small group and stuff, and, and I voiced something to him that I've never heard anybody voice before. In the, but I asked him, I said, you know, I don't ever split up small groups, go find three people and pray together. Because it's high school all over again, and I'm going to be left alone. <laughs> I was in a meeting a, a, a four or five months ago, where, and it was, we were supposed to be, it was a seminar thing, <coughs> and I knew half the people there. They get up, get in groups of three. You know, that high school insecurity grabs me. I'm like almost 40 years old, and I still feel it. Okay? And so there is nothing that I can do to remove all of the apprehension away from a small group. But I just want you to know, you're not weird to feel that way. Or if you are, we're weird together. If you don't feel that way, well, did I need that for you? Aren't you tough? Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> And so what I'm saying is, if you're feeling a little apprehensive about coming to a small group because you don't know people, because you're scared of being the, the person with nobody to talk to, I hate going to weddings and stuff for that same reason. And I'm not a soldier. I mean, I, I've read, I, you know, I, I'm a little bit awkward, okay? And, uh, but I, I always sit with the guy that wants to show me a scar from his operation that he just had. I always sit by that guy every stinking time. Well, not every time, but I just made a joke about it, and then that night I had to sit by, and it was like two in a row. Okay, so it happened twice in a row, but it seems like all the time now that I go, <laughs> that guy at the table, man, right there. Or who am I going to sit with? I'm so I, I have my, okay, check this out. Small groups, groups of people. I got my 20 years of reunion coming up this summer. It scares the crap out of me, just so you know it, okay? I didn't, I didn't like those people then, you know. Um, I should say, did any of you go to high school with me? Not a one. No, Tanya. Tanya's not here. I like Tanya. I always enjoy Tanya. Um, uh, we graduated at the same time. Uh, I, wonder if she, I wonder if she feels that way about that. Our 20 years is coming up, right? I walk into this room, people I haven't seen forever. I, I'm obviously look a lot younger and thinner than any of them are going to. No, anyway. Um, I'm just glad my wife is tall and good like God's boy. Yeah, see, I did right. You know. <coughs> and we'll drive her car, you know, you know that goes. Um, but I, I just want to encourage you that you're normal if you feel that way. And, and we do everything we can to alleviate those things, you know. That's why we're, I'm hoping our groups can be a little larger. And I, I want you in these small groups. And I know what it takes sometimes to take that step to be in a small group like that. If I can convince you to become part of a small group, I know that God is going to do amazing, wonderful things. There's a third level of intimacy I want to talk to you about. Okay? Number one was the arena. That's kind of like you just come and, and we know the same thing about each other. The second is mass, but there's a third one. Uh, and I, I should read the Bible verse that has to do with it because that would be meaningful for you. Uh, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Blessed. Blessed are the wounds of a friend. Now, what does this mean? You know, it never is nice when somebody wounds you, and that's what this verse is saying. When, when, but bless, why would the wounds from a friend be good? You say to yourself, well, I, I've had friends, and they wounded me, and it wasn't good at all. Well, this is the kind of thing. When we all have, and, and this is what you can write down if you're writing things down. I see all of you frantically doing so. Um... We all have blind spots. We all have blind spots. And so the arena, I see you, you see me. We have the mask, you get to see what I let you see. But thirdly, we have blind spots that you see in me that I don't see in myself. And we had, I was with a group of people the other day from, from our church, and I looked at them and I said, what I want from you guys and, and gals is, I, if you see something in me that I don't see, I'm trusting you to tell me about it. I know that when I worked on staffs, I had a relationship with Pastor Kevin where I, I, had, I felt an obligation before the Lord to share with him my entire heart about how I, th how I thought things were going and what I thought about stuff. Okay, What does that mean? That means if I hope to have people in my life. Now, not all of you because I, I, mean, I don't know all of you quite as much, right? And so um, I, I, don't, I don't trust everybody to have this kind of relationship with me. 
to, to be able to wound me. But I want people in my life, and I, and I hope it's a large group, that these are people that can come and say, Scott, and, and they can say, this is something you're doing, and, and you know, it, maybe you don't lack integrity, but you look like you're, you're lacking integrity in this area. And I just feel an obligation to the Lord to, to reveal that to you. Or, Scott, did you know that you made this person feel this way when you did this or that? We need people in our lives that love us enough to take a risk. It's the booger in the nose. Who's your real friend? It's the one that told you about the booger hanging out of your nose. That was way funnier in my head. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's because you're sitting at a table and somebody's got, they, 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 they've got you know, something, something on their shirt, their face, whatever, and, and, and we always go, oh yeah, you must be my real friend because you actually told me about this. You ever walked into the bathroom, looked in the mirror, and realized there wasn't a real friend at the table? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> Only me? Okay. Um, that, that happens. We need people in our lives that love us, trust us enough to wound us. And that's, that's a hard thing to do. I, I've had heart-wrenching things where I, I thought there's a 50-50 chance of this ending our relationship. And so I try to sandwich it in a lot of love. I try to create that safety. And, I, and then I try to say I have to, you know, I have something that I just really feel obligated to talk to you about. And then you say something. I've ruined people's days. Maybe you get to do that more as a pastor. I don't know, but I've said things, I've said terrible things to people. Not terrible in that it was bad to say, but terrible in it was really hard to communicate because it, it hurt. And and to create an environment where you can say something that somebody doesn't want to hear. And some and I've I've often had people get mad at me, and then they come back later and, and appreciated what I shared. Sometimes they just stay mad at you, and that's a risk that you take. But I want to be in a church that that will share with me my blind spots. And we all have blind spots. You know, we have blind spots with our own kids. We have blind spots with the people around us. We, we all have blind spots. Uh, you know. And I, I want to be in a place where I can trust the people who are closest to me to tell me where I'm blind. To tell me what I'm missing. And that can't happen without a context to get together. And we need each other. We need each other to go beyond the arena, to begin to take off the mask, and then have the courage and to love somebody enough to say, Pastor Scott, you probably didn't mean this. See, you're allowed to use tact, okay? I would much rather have somebody confront me with something with a little bit of tact, right? But Pastor Scott, did, you, you did this and it made these people feel this way. What you're doing here, I don't think it lines up with scripture over here. We're allowed to disagree with each other, but I hope I have people in my life that have that kind of courage. And I hope that I can be the kind of person that when somebody takes that risk, that it's a rewarding experience for them and I don't, I don't make them feel dumb, you know. Or get mad at them, or, or whatever. Not that I'm I'm perfect. You know, somebody criticizes me. I you know I have a hard time with that, just like you would. But I want to be a church that isn't satisfied with where we are, and that means the wound. Uh, blessed are the wounds of a friend. And so this Wednesday, uh, take out your cards again. You can actually take out all your cards that you've got in your hand there. If you're visiting with us, um, if you would take a moment and, and fill out that that. Uh, that large card there. I'd like to send you a gift in the mail. And uh, just appreciate you giving me the privilege of doing that. 